Hi there, Blaze here, and in today's tutorial I'm gonna show you how to create health system in Godot 4. I will use the example project, which contains player scene, which is based on sprite 2D and collision shape, enemy, which is also sprite 2D and collision shape, and the gameplay, which is a mine scene, and I have a player and three enemies here. I've also implemented movement script to the player, so if I play the game, you will see that I can move the player using arrow keys, and I have the ability to hit these enemies. You can implement this input on your own, or you can download the entire finished project from my website. I want to show how to implement health as a component, so if you click on the add child node, they will appear here, somewhere in the node 2D. So let's create a new folder in the resources. Let's call it components, and I will create a script name health and this will inherit the node just a node this doesn't need to be the node 2d because health don't need a position on the world so let's go with node let's create and now we can open this health gd we can leave the extant node because we will need this and we want to specify the class name and the class name is health now when you save the script and go to the alt child node you can search for the health and you will have the health from the health gd and you will be able to add this node to the player let's move this to the top it doesn't matter at all but let's move this and it shows here in the scene you can open the script by clicking this icon here okay so we have health in the player we want to add also the health to the enemy so let's do this in the same way and let's move this to the top let's save these scenes and let's edit our health okay so i want to show you how to implement this in the way that can be used across multiple games of course this is maybe not the final project of the uh, entire health system maybe and uh, probably you will want to uh, make some changes to adjust it into your project but i used uh, this script in my game i used similar logic in my latest game created with Unity, so I think that this can be really useful in the final project. I will start with signals. What I want to signal is the information that the health changed, and I want to specify the difference. Difference, or you can go with just a diff, this will be shorter, of the type of int, because I want to create my health system basing on the ints. You can do this on the floats, but int seems easier to implement, and I don't like to use mm, float numbers for health. I just want to have the ability to say that, okay, this player or this enemy has one, two, or three health instead of 1.4. It's just easier for me, but do what you want. Another signal I want to send is that health is depleted. And that means that the health is over and we need to remove the player or enemy from the map. One more signal, similar to the health change, but to the max health. I will explain you what is max health later in this video, but I also want this signal because I want to know when the max health will change. And also I will report the difference in ints. Okay, so let's move to the variables. I want to create earlier mentioned uh, max health and let's go with default value as free. The max health is the maximum health amount that uh, the player or the enemy can have. And the max health is also the initial value for me. Also, we will use the health, which represents the actual value of health. So if the actual health, if the health value goes to the zero, that means that the enemy or the player don't have any health left but the max health will not change as long as you don't want to implement something like special abilities to change the maximum health. For example, like in the Terraria, when you eat the health crystal, your max health will increase. And this is the only example when the max health will change. And the health is also int and it needs to be set to the max health. But for this to work, you need to specify this as I already. What I also want to do is export this max health. So I can change this by clicking on health and setting this here. Without this export key, I won't be able to set this by clicking on health. Okay, another variable I want to export also is information about the immortality and default is set for false. And what is immortality used for? I used this in my game when I respawned the player and I wanted to be immortal for a few seconds after respawning or in some animations. So this is when you can use immortality. And as I said, sometimes I use timed immortality, for example, for one or two seconds. So I also need the timer for this immortality. And at the beginning, it's set for null. Now I want to create the functions that will modify this max health, immortality, or health. But I also want them to be the properties of these variables. So to implement both the functions and the properties, we can do this the easy way. Let's create the function that modify the max health. And let's name it set max health. This will get a value of type int. For now, let's set a pass. It doesn't matter. And let's create a function that get the max health. And it just return the max health. 
you can set the return also here. And now I want to use these properties. So let's add it to the exported variable max health by assigning these functions to the set and get right after the export variable using double comma. Okay, so let's do the same with immortality and health. Immortality, for example, will just set the immortality variable to the value provided. And for get, it will just return the immortality. So you can also remove these setters and getters and use only the variable. But I want the immortality to be accessible like a variable, but also like a function, because sometimes I use this, sometimes I use this. One more with health. For health and max health, setting is a little more interesting, and this is because I use these setter functions. So let's start with implementing max health setter. First, we want to clamp the value because we want the max health to be at least one, and we don't want to specify the maximum value for this health. You also can display an error here. The line below, you can print the statement that, hey, this is an error because you set the max health to the zero or lower. But I just want to clamp this value in the case if something go wrong. Uh, so yes, we will set the one if the value is zero or lower. And if not, we will just set the value. Now let's check. If the clamped value is not the max health, so we need to add the not here, that means that the clamped value isn't equal to the max health, so the max health is changed. I want to check this because if max health is set to the exact the same value it has now, I don't want to signal to send signal max health changed. I want to send this signal only if health really changed. So if health changed, I want to send signal but I also need to specify the difference, so I will calculate the difference. And if you will use this order, so clamp value minus max health, you will get the difference with the sign corresponded to the exact difference. So if I have the max health at 3 and set new as 4, the difference will be 1. But if I have max health 3 and set it to the 2, you will have a difference minus 1. So I think this is really useful. So let's emit the signal with the difference as an argument. But we also need to set this max health because we don't set it here in nowhere. So we need to set the max health to the value. You need to remember about this because this will not be done automatically by the engine. You need to set this manually. One more thing, it's really useful if you change your max health to the lower value. You will need to check if the health isn't now greater than the max health, and if it is greater, you need to set the health to the max health. So you need to cut the actual health to the value that is in max health, because health cannot be higher than the max health. Seems logic. Now let's implement the self set health function. You want to check if the immortality is on. And also if the health need to be set to the lower value than it is now, you just need to return. Because I want to provide ability to set the health to the higher value because the player can get some first aid kit, for example. But I don't want to set it to the lower value if the immortality is on. So we'll just return in this case. We also want to clamp the health value. So let's go again with the clamped value. But now we can use the plan by function and set the value as a value minimum will be the zero because I want to have zero as the lowest health. No one can have a minus one health, for example. And the max will be, of course, max health. Then again, I need to check if the value I want to set is different from the health I have at the moment. And let's do this different way. So you will see that this is also correct. Again, I need to calculate the difference. Again, I need to set the health to the value. And again, I need to emit the signal with the difference as an argument. Now I don't want to check if the health is higher than the max health, but I want to check if the health is not zero. And if the health is zero, I want to emit the signal health depleted. Okay, so we have a health implemented, but one bonus with using immortality timer. I want to create a new function, set temporary immortality. And as an argument, I want to specify the time as a float because the time will be in seconds. And if I call this function, I want to set the immortality to true, but only for specific time, the time I set in the argument. And then I want to switch back to the immortality as false. 
So I want to set up the timer, but I want to do this only once. And if I will reuse this function in the future, I want to use the timer it created earlier. I don't want to free the memory by removing this timer. I want to keep it in the node. So I want to create a new timer because we don't want to create a timer manually. I want to create a timer dynamically in the health only when I will use this set temporary immortality. So I will check if the immortality timer is new and if yes, I will create a new immortality timer. I will set it as a one shot because I don't want it to repeat the shots every time this and hits the time I specified. Only one shot and I will add it as a child of the current node typo here. Okay, and if you're reusing the timer, you need to check if it's disconnected the earlier signals. And I can use the set immortality function here. This is why I also want to set this setter, because if I don't have this function, I will need to create another that set the immortality. So it probably have more sense to use these setters. And if this timeout is connected to set immortality, I just need to disconnect it. Okay, so this check is only for reusing the timer. If you use the timer once, you don't need to specify this uh, if statement. Now I really want to set the timer. So I will set the wait time to the time I provided in the parameter. And I will also bind the function to the timeout event by using connect, sorry. And the bind is false because I want to set the immortality to false. I want to set the immortality to true at the beginning. And I want to start the immortality time. So what this will do, this will create the immortality timer and set it to the time. Then it will connect the timeout signal to the set immortality function. But that means that this function set immortality with false will be called when the timeout will occur. So at the beginning, I set the immortality to true. And after this time, I will set this immortality to false. And I need to start the timer because I want this timeout to occur in the future. Okay, so set temporary immortality is done and the entire health is also done. And because this video is really long, I will cut it into two parts. So be sure to subscribe and see you soon in the part two in a few days. Bye.